Hi everybody, I am so excited and feeling like a little, like that nervous excitement about recording this week's episode of Thriving Together. I am your host, Nitika Chopra, and I I have a lot that I want to share with you today, and I feel like there is not like a clear <laughs> set sort of vision for this episode. I just want to really share what's been on my heart and hopefully it'll support you all. I think especially for those of you that are navigating your careers and navigating that journey in a way that, you know, might feel a little complicated or might feel like there's a lot of unknowns. I've definitely been going through a huge change, I feel like, in my career life and I want to share a bit about that with you, and I also want to let you know of some big, huge news. There's actually a couple big announcements. I haven't done a solo episode in a long time, and part of that is because I have so many people that I want to chat with on this podcast. I have so many people that I'm like always, you know, meeting in person or connecting with their work online. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to talk to that person. I want to be friends with that person. And it inspires me to invite them on this show, which is so fun. And honestly, a huge part of why I started this show, Thriving Together, is because I have always wanted to find a way to make my way back to television and make my way back to hosting my own talk show again. And for so for some of you who might not know, I used to host a talk show um, called Naturally Beautiful on Asia TV. It was so long ago now. And it was really a dream come true, but I also feel like it was a dream come true that only went so far and there was like still so much more that I wanna do with that dream. So a part of me thought, okay, like let's go back to hosting, let's go back to doing this you know, sort of interview format where you have guests on. And that's kind of what I did when I first got my show years ago. I started my company, Bella Life, and I thought I would have articles and content on there that people could see could be a show at some point in their, you know, by turning that content into something else. And it worked, as as many of you have heard me tell the story. And um, I kind of thought, okay, let's do it again. Let's try that. Let's try it in a different way. And I love having my show. I love the guests that I've had. I love that we're now doing this on YouTube, too, if you're watching this on YouTube. I'm, like, makeup-free. I have fluffy hair. I just am, like, coming at you completely natural. And I feel like it's been really nice to show up on camera and be in front of all of you. It's been nice to have a bit of a different audience on YouTube um, and kind of, you know, connect with different people there. And I haven't done YouTube videos in a really long time either. So that's been really, really fun. But what I'm getting at with all of this is the last, I would say the last two years have been such huge years of transition for me. They have really been about, you know, what is it that I truly want? What is it that Nitika truly wants? Like, yes, I have all these huge dreams. I have all these people that I want to help. I have all these things that I like to do. But what is truly in my heart? And I think sometimes I can get really lost in wanting to make sure everyone else is okay. And one of the pitfalls of having a big heart, which I feel like a lot of you out there can resonate with this because I know a lot of you have huge hearts and are so loving and so caring. But one of the pitfalls that I've learned really through my nervous system work um, is that that can also lead to me overriding what's right and true for me. And... I've sort of been peeling back the layers around this slowly. Um, You know, I've been exploring a lot of these different things within the work that I'm doing at Chronicon, seeing what's really right for me, um, you know, and what are the ways that I want to show up for that community and that conversation um, that feel just healthy for me while able to still show up fully. And, you know, there's so much more that I could say about that, but that's sort of been the high level of what's been going on. And I've been talking to the community. If you're a member of Chronicon's community, you know, I've been talking to you about this for a while and not necessarily with like any major answers, but 
just sort of saying, okay, there's something brewing here. There's something happening here. Like what, what's going on? I'm not totally sure, but like, let's see what we can do to make sure that I am aware of, you know, everything that's, that's happening and that's trying to come forward right now. So what I will say is that I guess when you're listening to this, um, about a month and a half ago, I went through a really challenging breakup and I also got COVID in the same week. And it was a really, really kind of heart-wrenching experience. Um, I just felt like I felt like something in me was being cracked open, but like, you know, I was also really aware of it and I was kind of like, why? (laughs) I don't want to be cracked open in this way. I just want like things to be, you know, a little peaceful or a little chill for once. No, that is not the, clearly that is not what I signed up for in this lifetime. Um, And so I went through all of that kind of intensely over this one week. And it also really cracked me open to what I was saying before about like, what do I really want? I spent all this time, you know, really caring about this person and really kind of putting a lot of my own needs and my own desires to the side in a lot of ways, not because they made me, but because I overrode my own needs and desires a lot in that uh, connection with that person which is something I feel like I haven't done in so long, but I also haven't dated in a really long time. So it was a really great uh, practice run, I guess, for me. And what came out of that week of honestly, just excruciating heartache, um, not so much because of the person, but just because of the dynamic and all the things that unfolded around that experience, I found myself craving writing again. I started my career as a writer. I remember when I first started writing my blog, Bella Life, I had never written like that before. Um, I had never really like, I had actually worked for a South Asian magazine when I was married, um, which was really great. Um, But I had written things like, you know, write-ups about beauty brands or like gift guides and things like that. And I really like loved doing that. But I had never written this more personal blog style writing that I um, would sort of write in my journal. uh, But I had never really shared that with other people. So when I started Bella Life, I sort of unleashed that part of me. And I remember it being so therapeutic for me. And I also remember having the experience of it having a huge impact on people around me, people who are following me, subscribing to my newsletter, all those things. And I don't know, during that week, um, about a month and a half ago, I just was like, I felt like this had been on my heart for a minute, but I hadn't given myself the space to listen to it. And so I decided to start a sub stack, which, I was not planning on doing, just to be clear. I have a lot of friends that have started Substacks. I follow some really great Substacks out there. Um, But I also, you know, do a lot of things. So I was like, okay, who needs another thing? Who needs another place to get my content? You know, all of that kind of stuff. But it was one of those moments, and I encourage you to kind of let go of all the mental noise and maybe find this point of clarity for yourself too, which is why I'm sharing it. But it was one of those moments where I was like, I can't not write anymore. Like I need to write. And something that I haven't really told anyone, um, I don't know if I've told anyone this publicly, I've barely told people in my life about this actually, is this spring, I I actually started working with a book coach to work on a book, but don't get too excited because we've taken a turn from, from from this project. But I started working with this woman and she is someone I've admired for many years and she was kind of like the pinnacle like if if I'm gonna write a book like I'm gonna write it with her like not that she would be ghostwriting it but just like getting her you know advice having her help me figure out how to you know frame the book and all those different things right basically coaching me through the process and I could not for the life of me get myself 
to finish this process of writing my book proposal. And I think it, it's hard for me to even say that out loud a little bit because I am a very hard worker. <laughs> I like to complete things that I start. I definitely try to do the impossible sometimes and just keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up even when things are not going great or perfect. But I kind of got to this point with her and she actually talked to me about it where we were both kind of like, Nitika? <laughs> I feel like you're forcing yourself to try to write a book because everyone, like all these astrologers have always told me that I need to write a book and I see all of, you know, so many of my peers have written amazing books and it's helped their career so much. It's gotten to them so, it's gotten them so far. And so, yeah, I know I have a lot to share. I know I have a big story to share, all those things. And I always kind of get to this place where I'm like, you better write a book, like you gotta write a book. And in the process of working with her, we both realized by the end that I was doing it out of obligation and I was doing it out of a place of, you know, I think I'm supposed to do this versus something that's truly from me, from my center, from my heart, from my spirit and from what I know. And that's why I started the Substack because I think the desire to write was true and was really strong and was there, but I don't think the form was what I see books to be a lot for me. I'm not like a rule follower so much with like creativity and all that kind of stuff. I don't really love that. I like to do things a bit differently. And I have only heard <laughs> really stressful stories from every single person who has ever written a book and, and all different types of books. Um, and it's just not something that appeals to me. Now, I'm not saying I will never write a book. I have no idea what my future holds. Um, but I, every time I've tried, it has just not been the thing for me. So I share all this just to say that, first of all, like, it's, I'm, I'm in a process of trying to give myself some grace that like, hey, at least I tried. At least I tried things. At least I said, let me start this podcast, Thriving Together. Or let me, you know, start working with a book coach. Let me do all these different things. And what I will say is that in my journey over the last couple of years, not only have I realized that I, you know, sometimes give more than I allow myself to receive, which is a huge thing that I'm working on, but I also realize that I am not really willing to give from a place of self-sacrifice anymore. And that is a really big deal when you are in a conversation and you're working in an industry or even like creating an industry around helping people. Like obviously I care so much about helping people. It's what I feel like I was born to do. But I think where I felt a little lost along the way is that there isn't, there hasn't been as many models for people to be helpful and to be, you know, really giving and nurturing and also have boundaries and make sure that they are nurtured in the process. So I'm sort of learning this in real time and I'm starting to get to the place where I'm actually excited about it. I think for a long time, I just felt really it was very daunting for me because I just felt like, what the heck, how am I gonna figure this out? But I think we're figuring it out. And one of the ways that I figured it out is by deciding to do a Chronicon tour this year. So if you're following us at all online, you probably already heard about this, but if not, you should definitely go to chronicon.co, that's chronicon.co, and check out uh, our brand new tour that's happening um, in October. And I'm, I'm honestly so proud that I pulled this together. <laughs> I'm so proud of the people that are joining us. And every time I reached out to somebody about the tour, they were like, we love what you're doing. They were so complimentary. They were so kind. They were so generous. Like it was such a beautiful, wonderful feeling. So I'm really, really proud of the fact that we're doing this. And I partly did it because taking on the Chronicon conference by myself is, it, it, it's too much for me to do by myself. And I did it, I did it by myself. And I'm so proud that I did it and I loved it so much. And I hope to do it again. And I hope, you know, to do it again soon. And 
I am working on how do I still give back and have an impact and show up for this conversation in this community while taking care of myself at the same time. So while a tour is not, you know, the easiest thing in the world and there's still lots of moving parts and lots of components, I do feel like it is a, you know, more digestible lift for me than doing a huge tour with hundreds of people, um, you know, and dozens of speakers and partners and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to be transparent about that and also give you that example because I think that sometimes we can feel like it's all or nothing. Like it's, you know, either I self-sacrifice or I can't do this at all. And I'm learning that there's this really powerful, beautiful nuance in the middle that allows me to show up for the work that's important to me and the people that are important to me, like all of you, but also allows me to take care of myself at the same time. And this is not how I have always done it. It's not how I have always ran things or, you know, led, led with things. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to figure this out. And I'm also partly excited because I know that a lot of you out there also really struggle or come up against this challenge too, because so many of you are so generous and doing work that really is for others. And so I want us all to know how to do this in a way that really, really supports us. So that's one of the first things. We just announced the Chronicon Tour. Um, when you're listening to this, it'll be you know this week actually, we just announced it. So get your tickets. Um, we're going to LA, San Francisco, and we're doing a finale in New York. And it's all in October, and all the proceeds go to the Chronicon Foundation. Um, so you know your tickets are, are going to help the work that we're doing. And there are limited tickets because we're not doing the huge conference. There's not like hundreds of tickets. There's like very small amount of tickets. So make sure that you get the tickets that you want. And we have early bird pricing. I think for another week, um, it'll be it'll be early bird pricing, and then the price is going to go up. So make sure you get those tickets. Um, let me know if you have any questions about that. But it should all be on the website. So that's part of it. And then the other announcement that I wanted to share with you is. I don't know, some of you might already sense that I was gonna tell you this today, but I'm not sure based on what I've already shared. But I've been looking at all of the different things that I'm doing, right? The community, we have our app, the Chronicon community, um, which is just one of the greatest loves of my life. I'm so proud of it. And I also find that, you know, it does take a lot of work for me to produce all of the events, like making sure we have speakers every month, making sure we have content every day, all those different kinds of things. And it's work that I honestly really love. Like it's not work that brings me down or that like I kind of, um, what's the word, like resent or feel like, oh my God, why do I have to do this? Like I genuinely love curating content. I love curating events. I love hosting events. And then I love that I get to do it for these amazing human beings that are just like some of my favorite people. So it's a lot of wins for me. Um, but at the same time, I am really committed to having us grow. And I know that there's probably more energy I could be pouring into even just our events and the different content that we have that I feel like I sort of took a little bit of a back seat on. I mean, I'm still doing everything. But I know the level at which I can do things and I feel like I haven't been investing as much of my heart into that community in terms of maybe having more events or doing events. We used to do these larger events in the community, which are really cool. I haven't had the bandwidth to do some of those and different things like that. It's been more on autopilot, I guess is what I would say. And I really want that community to grow. So I think in looking at the fact that I'm doing that, the fact that I've been doing this podcast, and then now I'm doing my sub stack, which is called The Truth Today, I have decided to, at least for now, pause this podcast, Thriving Together. And I feel like I've been nervously trying to say this the whole episode, <laughs> but I feel a little nervous saying this because um, I had so many thoughts going through my head when I was figuring out what decision to make. And I 
you know, looked at all of the different things, like I mentioned, that I'm doing. And I also, you know, and I didn't even mention, like, the chronic contour and things outside of, you know, those few things I just mentioned. And what I will say is I know that the quality of what we have in the community is exceptional. I know that um, the tour is going to be wonderful and people are going to show up for that and are excited to show up for that. We've already sold tickets and we barely even announced it. Um, we just like announced it today, like the day that I'm recording this uh, in the community. We've already sold like a bunch of a bunch of tickets. So I know that that's going to be great and people are going to sign up for that and be a part of that. And I also have noticed a huge uptick in terms of like the, um, I guess uptick isn't the right word, but like the audience that's reading my Substack is like in the thousands, whereas the audience that tends to listen to the podcast, at least from the stats that I can see, is much less than that. So in looking at oh, okay, I love all these different things. I love being with all of you. I want to share as much as I can and support all of you as much as I can. But where am I also getting nourishment and feeling like, oh, I'm being supported in this particular avenue or this particular way in addition to I like doing this thing. So that's a change that I've had to make. I feel like I used to just do things because they were fun or they felt good and that was enough for me. And I'm really trying to shift so that not only do things feel good and not only are they of service, but how am I also receiving in the, in the process? So the Substack is really that for me. I've been sharing past episodes of Thriving Together, which has been great. Um, and I really love that, you know, we have all these episodes that we've done. This is already like technically season three, I think. Um, and my goal was to go to the end of the year, but I think with the tour and the election and so much going on, I've decided that it's time to pause. And yeah, it's hard for me to make decisions like that sometimes because as I mentioned, I am this person who likes to like keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. I'm gonna like go for it and I'm not gonna give up. I'm not someone who gives up. That's like not my vibe. So much to my detriment sometimes. <laughs> so I'm not saying that's like such a great thing all the time. So to kind of do this evaluation and decide, you know what, I am going to say I'm pausing this. I am going to say that I'm stopping it is, is kind of a big thing. And I've also been thinking about my first podcast, The Point of Pain, um, which I just loved so much. And I feel like the conversations that we had there were so rich and so deep. Um, and so I've just been thinking about all these different things and trying to figure out what does God want for me? What are the best ways for me to share my voice, my truth, all of those things? And then how can I actually do that in a way that's going to support all of you? So for now, the community is a huge part of what I want to focus on. And Chronicon's tour, we're going to be doing tours next year too, which I'm really excited about. So that's also something that I want to start like focusing on already and just trying to figure out how can we line those tours up. And then we also, um, and then I also want to focus on my Substack. I love that thousands of you are reaching, are reading that every week. It's been about six weeks since I had that really intense week, um, and every week y'all have been just so. I can tell that it's hitting the points and really resonating in a way that is very fulfilling for me. Cause it's not like I'm doing any gimmicks or tricks to kind of get you all to care about what I'm writing. I'm just sharing my truth. And that's all I've ever wanted to do. And I think after a while it starts to feel like, okay, well, how can I do that in a way that's really going to reach people? Because it sort of feels like, you know, a little, I don't know, like you're talking to the ethers out there when you're creating so much, but you're not always getting that feedback. So those are some of my mega updates. And I wanted to share all of that with you, partly because I just miss connecting with you all in this way. And I know that there is a community out there that listens to this show every week. And I know that, you know, a lot of you have told me that you love this show. And I also love this show. I really appreciate you tuning in and being a part of this journey. And I also know that there are so many people out there that are going through a similar journey trying to figure out what is it that I'm really meant to do? 
I have this set of skills and I could share them in this many different ways. What, what is the best way for me? What is the most fulfilling way for me? And then what is the way that's gonna have the greatest impact? That is so much, that, that's basically the list of questions that I asked when I decided to do the tour this year instead of doing the large conference. So I'm in a constant inquiry around those different questions and I hope you'll join me on that inquiry if you're also feeling like you're coming up against different career changes or you're wondering you know, what exactly it is that you're meant to do next. It's not, they're not having the clarity that you want. Maybe some of those questions will help you get there. And yeah, I just wanna say again, thank you to all of you who have been listening. I'm not saying that it's by forever, but I do think that, you know, we tried it and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go where I feel like there's the most energy and right now that is in my sub stack. So I hope you'll check that out if you're not already following it. What I will say about the sub stack is that it sends you each post when you subscribe in an email. So you see the whole post in the email. And sometimes people don't realize that you can actually heart or like the post from the email at the top left hand corner of the email. There's a little heart and you can click on that and like it from there. I also, I will say, I really want to start really creating community over there that's like outside of the community they already have at Chronicon. And I am gonna start incorporating more benefits for paid subscribers. It's like $5 or $6 a month to subscribe. It's not like expensive at all, um, which I really like actually. And so I'm gonna start doing things like group coaching potentially, or um, if not actually not group coaching, more like group events, like ways that we can get together, um, things like that. And also do subscriber, like paid subscriber only posts and things like that. So I'm kind of, brainstorming on what that's gonna be um, over the next like couple of months. And then I think in the fall, I will have something really ready for you. But I know some of you have already subscribed and I just appreciate it so much. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing like what I can pull together over there and how I can kind of create a world that's outside of my chronic illness world. I think that's also really important. I've always preached that you know, I have a chronic illness, but I am not my chronic illness. Um, and I think that's true for all of us, even though at times it can feel like we are because it's dictating so much of our lives. I want to I want to model that. Right. And so that means I'm going to be talking about things that are beyond my health journey. And I already have. I've talked a lot about heartbreak. I've talked a lot about some pretty personal things over there and it's been really cathartic for me and I think the audience has also really enjoyed it. So if you want to get the Substack app, it's actually free to get and then you can just follow the truth today or you can search my name I think too um, and follow the publication and then you'll get notices whenever we post anything. I actually really like it to be honest. I like find myself on there and like enjoying my time on there which is really great. And then you can also like comment and like whenever I share the posts. And I really mean it when I say like, it means a lot to me whenever I get a comment. I, and that's part of what had me start the Substack. I remember when I was writing my blog years ago, I would get such beautiful comments, people digging deep into their own life after I had just poured my heart, you know, my whole heart out onto the, onto the page they would then share their heart with me and it creates this really, really special, special engagement, interaction and connection that matters to me. So I know that was a bit of a long spiel about the Substack, but I really wanted to, to share that with you and let you know that it doesn't, I'm not just saying it, like it really, really makes a difference to me. I have so many screenshots of comments or notes people have left me or anything like that um you know and i refer to those and look at those often when i'm having a hard time or when you know i'm working on this big dream of mine that i've had for so long and i'm feeling lost or i'm unsure it's like the fact that you all take the time to you know reflect and be on the journey with me 
that's never going to get old for me. I can assure you of that. It's been over 14 years and it's not gotten old yet. So thank you all for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you to my Chronicon community members. I love you all so much. Thank you to anyone who's read my Substack or listens to this podcast. It means a lot. And I hope to stay connected with you. DM me or Send me a message somewhere, wherever you are connected with me, and let me know what you thought of today's episode. And thanks for being on the journey.